In conversations about equity, there are many frequently used words that may be misunderstood. Let's take a look at some of them. Diversity asks the question, who is and is not at the table? Diversity is an asset because the more diverse a group is, the more experiences and perspectives there are at the table. And that prevents a group from becoming an echo chamber that simply affirms similar ways of thinking while missing blind spots. Diversity is key to innovation and solving sticky problems. Each person at the table possesses identity markers that diversify a group. These include race, ethnicity, social class, religion, gender, sexual orientation, ability, and age, among others. These markers overlap, which means people may share some markers and not others. This is known as intersectionality. Intersectionality is a helpful framework in conversations about equity because in social situations, certain identity markers have power and privilege over others. These markers affect how a person perceives and interacts with other people, as well as how they feel about themselves in social situations. Implicit biases influence all of us, and because they operate in the unconscious layers of our mind, we are not aware of them unless we critically strive to be. This critical awareness is an important step in becoming an equity-minded educator. And implicit biases do not go away in online environments. A 2018 study showed that implicit bias influences who college professors are more likely to interact with in online courses. The study found that instructors were 94% more likely to respond to discussion forum posts made by students they perceived to be white males than by other students. As an educator in California, you serve a very diverse group of students. In terms of race and ethnicity alone, in the California Community College system, seven out of 10 students is a person of color. And in the CSU system, six out of 10 students are people of color, which really questions the term minority, doesn't it? Inclusion asks, to what extent does each person at the table feel a sense of belonging? Humans are hardwired for connection. Belonging is a basic human need. A 2015 study of STEM students found that belonging at the class level, more so than at the institutional level, is associated more strongly with engagement and commitment to persist to the next year. And in the 2019 publication, Talking About Leaving Revisited, researchers note, in order to succeed in STEM majors, students of color found it necessary to alter or override cultural values that were important to themselves, their families, and their communities. When a person is forced to override their values, they're being forced to change who they are. Fitting in places one's brain in an active state of stress, which over time leads to psychological fatigue. Belonging, on the other hand, means being accepted for one's true, authentic self. The word minority has long been used to refer to individuals who are Black, Latinx, Indigenous, or other people of color. But that's a problem because using the word minority implies that underrepresentation is linked to quantity, and only to quantity. And we know that oppression does not necessarily go away when a population increases in size. The United States is comprised of people from many cultures that have collectivist values. But in the U.S., white culture, which is individualistic, dominates. And if white dominant culture isn't decentered, many people are left out and denied the option to be their true authentic self. To reflect this more clearly, scholars have begun using the term minoritized instead of minority in conversations about equity. Minoritized cues us that oppression is an active social process in which we are complicit if we are not intentionally making efforts to be inclusive. Equity asks, does each person at the table have what they need to achieve the same outcomes? 
In teaching, equity is about identifying barriers in your class that prevent students from being able to achieve what they're capable of. It requires us to be race conscious as opposed to colorblind. And equity is not the same as equality. Equality is treating everyone the same with the intent to be fair. And that's a problem because it implies that everyone is the same. And that's not true. How can you ensure all of your students feel seen and valued in your class? What are the barriers in your class that prevent students from achieving what they're capable of?